So let's suppose that we have an object that is undergoing uniform circular motion. Now, what that basically means is the following. At any given time, if we examine the velocity vector and the net force acting on our object, we see that they act exactly perpendicularly to one another at a 90 degree angle. So the net force acting on the object which creates our acceleration always points towards the center of our circle. Now while the velocity vector is always tangent to the circle, so they're always at a 90 degree angle. Now what that basically means is the magnitude of velocity, the speed of my object will remain constant but the direction of my velocity will change and because my direction continually changes our object is said to be accelerating towards the center of our circle. Once again as long as the net force on the object is perpendicular to the motion of that object, the object will move in uniform circular motion. So that implies that the speed or the magnitude of velocity, uh, velocity will remain constant, but the direction of velocity will change. Now let's suppose my net force no longer acts at a 90 degree angle. Now let's suppose it acts at an angle less than 90 degrees. So notice before my force, my net force on my object was along the y axis and so that meant we did not have a net force acting along the x axis. And that's because, and that's exactly why the magnitude of velocity remained constant because we did not have a net force acting in the same direction as our velocity vector. Now, when the net force acts at an angle, what happens is this net force creates two component vectors. One vector, known as force tangential, runs along the x-axis in the same direction or actually along the same axis as the velocity vector. And we still have the second component vector called the radial force that runs along the y-axis. So we have a tangential force that's always tangent to the pathway that points along the same axis as the velocity vector. And we also have the radial force that acts in the same direction as before along the y-axis. So these two forces will do different things. This force is perpendicular to the motion, to the velocity of our object and that means because it's perpendicular, this force will be responsible for creating centripetal acceleration. It will be responsible for keeping our uh, object moving in a circular pathway. Now the pathway is no longer uniform and that's because we have this force tangential component. This force which acts along the same axis as the velocity vector will act to change the magnitude of velocity and so now our speed will not be constant. So not only will the magnitude of velocity change but the direction will change too. So, we're going to have uh, an acceleration pointing inward toward the center of the circle and that's called our radial or centripetal acceleration and now we're also going to have a tangential acceleration because we have a force acting tangent to the pathway. So once again, if the net force on the object does not point to the center as in this example, it will create two component forces. One force, known as force radial, is the vertical component that runs along the y-axis that creates our centripetal acceleration. Now the second force, known as the tangential force, acts to change the magnitude of velocity and it creates the tangential acceleration. So, let's recall the formula for our radial or centripetal acceleration. It is equal to the velocity of the object squared divided by r, our radius. Now, what exactly is the formula for tangential acceleration? Well, 
if we take our velocity vector and take the derivative of that velocity vector with respect to time, that will give us the magnitude of our tangential acceleration. Now, in some cases, we can approximate this. When this is a uh, constant, we can approximate to be the following formula. Change in my velocity divided by change in time. So, notice that once again, this always points towards the center of the circle while this is always tangent to my circle. And it can run either in parallel with our velocity or anti-parallel with the velocity. So let's look at the following example. A car starts from rest and accelerates uniformly to a velocity of 40 meters per second in 13 seconds. Suppose it's moving along a circle with a radius of 600 meters and let's make the assumption that our tangential acceleration is in fact constant. So, let's try to find our radial acceleration and our tangential acceleration. So, radial acceleration is equal to the formula, our velocity squared, so 40 times 40 squared, and that gives us 1600 divided by the radius, 600 meters, and that gives us a acceleration that points towards the center of our circle and has a magnitude of 2.67 meters per second squared. Now, what about B? What about our tangential? Well, we're going to use this formula and simply find our change in velocity divided by change in time. So change in velocity is we begin at 0 meters per second, we start the rest, and we go up to 40 meters per second. So that means 40 minus 0 is 40 meters per second. And our total time elapsed is 13 seconds, so we plug that in, we solve, and we find that our tangential acceleration is 3.08 meters per second squared. So, notice the following. Notice that this acceleration acts to change our direction of the object of the car, and this acceleration acts to keep our car moving along the circle, while what this does is it changes our velocity, the magnitude of velocity of the object. So, in this case, our object's velocity is continually increasing.